Hello, fellow travelers. I'm Nomad Jim, a retired, minimalist, solo, full-time slow traveler. Thanks for stopping by. If you're going to be traveling the world part-time or full-time, you're going to need a way to manage your mail while you're gone. So that's what we're going to talk about today. Different options available to you for managing and receiving your mail while you're away. This is video number three in a series that I'm doing about 10 key things that you need to address before you start your part-time or full-time slow travel journey. So let's get started. If you're a part-time traveler and still have a home base, then you may just want to continue to have your mail delivered to your home address and then have a family member or a friend occasionally stop by and pick up your mail from your mailbox. If you're a full-time traveler and no longer have a home base, then you may want to consider changing your mailing address to that of a family member or a friend so that your mail will then go to their mailbox. In both of these cases, you're putting a burden on either that family member or friend to manage your mail while you're gone. If they don't have a problem with that, then this is a great way to do it. Easy, cheap, effective. But if you feel like it might be a little bit more of a burden on your family member or friend than you'd really like them to have, then you'll need to look at some other options. One thing that you can do is to get a post office box, a PO box. In that case, your mail will be delivered to that box, which is at a post office, but still you have that same burden that you're putting on somebody else to come by and pick up your mail because it will start to accumulate over time in that box. A better option is to use what's called a virtual mailbox. It's similar to a P.O. box, except that you have a mail center operator, a brick and mortar company like a PostNet, Postal Express, mailboxes, etc. those type of places managing your mail instead of the post office. And with this, you also get an actual street address so you can receive packages at that location as well. The way that a virtual mailbox works is that each time a piece of mail comes into your mailbox, the manager will then take that piece of mail, take a picture of it, and send you an email showing you the outside of the envelope. Then you make a decision about what you want them to do with that piece of mail. And there's several options available to you. You could look at it and say, well, it's a piece of junk mail. I don't need it. You can toss that. And you let them know that and they will recycle that piece of mail. Or you may say, well, I don't want that piece of mail. I don't need it opened or anything like that, but it may have some sensitive information, personal information possibly. So I'd appreciate it to have it shredded first and then disposed. And they can do that. They can shred and then dispose of it. A third option is to have them open the envelope up to see what's inside. And then what they'll do is they'll scan each page that's inside the envelope and send you an email with an attachment that shows you the contents of the envelope. And then a fourth option is you could just have it sent forwarded to some other address, whether that's the address of a family member or a friend or to an address where you're physically located at that time. Now, if you decide to have the piece of mail opened, then you have a few options available to you then about what you want to do with it. So you may have, once you see what's inside, you say, well, I don't really need that. You can just get rid of that and they'll toss it, recycle it. Or you could look at it and say, it definitely has some sensitive information that I want other people to see. So shred it first and then dispose of it. Or you may say, now that I know what's inside that, I want that piece of mail forwarded to some other address. And then you provide that address and have it forwarded to there. There are several different companies that provide virtual mailboxes. Some of them are PostScan Mail, iPostal One, Anytime Mailbox. I personally use PostScan Mail and I've been using them for the past two years and I've been happy with the services that they provided. So I'll leave a link down in the description below in case you're interested in that. There are several different options available to you when you have a virtual mailbox, depending on how much mail you think you're going to be receiving. So if you don't get that much mail, maybe you can go with the basic package, which is what I have. And it's just 
30 pieces of mail per month before any additional charge would be added. Now, one thing you want to do before you have a virtual mailbox is make sure that you've gone as paperless as possible with all of your bills and statements and subscriptions and things like that so that you're minimizing the amount of mail that's going to be showing up at your virtual mailbox. Do you have any other ideas for receiving your mail while you're away? If you do, leave those in the comments down below. In the next video, we're going to be looking at how you manage your phone service and internet while you're away. So stay tuned for that one. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please hit the like button and subscribe to the channel. Until next time, let's get out there and travel.